In this tutorial, we will complete this tote bag. Um, it is a very unique tote bag. As you can see, it's got pointy edges at the top. And when we open it up, you will see that it actually stands at an angle, which makes it a very unique and pretty project to complete with your embroidery machine. So in the previous tote bag, we focused only on stitching and combining the individual blocks. In this tutorial, we will see how we can combine the outer shell with the lining and have a beautiful, spacious tote bag. Let us get started to complete this beautiful tote bag. So in the previous video, we focused on stitching out or embroidering the individual blocks and how to sew them together. You will recall that we stitched together two blocks and then a strip of four, and then we combined the blocks of two with a, with a strip of four. For this tote bag, you will need two strips of two, two strips of four, and two strips of five. The layout of the tote bag might seem a little bit tricky if you view it from this angle, but if we turn it around like so, notice that the strip of two are sewn together to the center of the strip of four, and then the strip of five are aligned on the left, stitched to the strip of four. The first three rows and the last three rows are exactly the same. In other words, it, would, it might be easier for you to, to combine these three rows and then join them together in this way. Now that we've finished combining all our blocks, we have the outer layer of our tote bag complete. And now for the fun part, we need a lining. And I chose this polka dot lining. Um, also, when you cut your lining, you will want to make sure that the front section and the front section of your tote bag are on top of each other when you cut your lining. It does not need to be exact, um, but it does make things a little bit easier. As you can see, it shows a little bit on the outside, but uh, it's, it's quite good. We also need handles or straps for our tote bag. We need two. Um, I cut these to measure 23 inches or 58 centimeters. And they are about one inch wide. But that is really up to you. How would you like how wide and how long you would like your straps or your handles. If you do not want to use the your lining as straps, you can use ribbon or store-bought webbing. Also, I will use something to close my bag with. So at the end, I will show you how to attach the elastic and this little embellishment as a closure. Now we will start to attach the handles on either side of the bag. For now, it is important to use this layout, make sure that this is the way that your um, front panel is lying in front of you. Place your lining on top of your stitched out, like this. I will just move it over and we will attach the handles on the one handle on this side and then the other handle on this side. Now, there's two ways that you can attach the handles. You can either keep it straight up, because this will be the, the highest part of your tote bag, and then you can sew it straight, which means your handles will be quite upright. The other way is to, to attach it like this. Um, so you can choose which way you would like to um, attach your handles. Just note that if you attach it in that way, that you will stitch a section of your your embroidery. Pin the handle in place 
about half an inch from the top side there and half an inch from the top on, on, on this side and just make sure that your handle has no kinks or twists in it. We will now stitch our lining to the embroidered fabric. Note that we will only sew from here to the top throughout the V-shape and stop here. We will not close this section or that section at the moment. So let us pin from there right through the V-shape until there and use the blocks as your markers. I pinned the handle on the right. We will do the same for the left. Again, open up your lining. Half an inch, just approximately half an inch from the side. Make sure there's no twist in your handle. And once that is pinned in place, put your lining on top. And again, we will pin now from the center of the, or, or from the center of this section, but from the first block through the V-shape, pin all the way, and we stop there. So both handles are pinned in place. Just something that I found good is to use long pins because for this tote bag it is much easier to stitch to use the the end of the blocks or the stitching on the blocks as your guideline and it will be easier to take out your pins if they are quite long if the pins are very short then you might want to pin it from this side and not from the lining side um, you can stitch it from this side, it shines through a little bit, or the stitching shows on, on this end, but I do find that the project is much neater when I stitch from this side. So I will take it to the sewing machine now, and we will, with a straight stitch on my sewing machine, I like to use a stitch length of about two and a half on tote bags. So from here, we'll stitch up to there, stitch up to the in a v-shape stitch up to this end and stopping right there and we will repeat the process for the right side with a straight stitch so both of the left and the right top sections of our tote bag is stitched and the handles are in place now we would like to cut our outer and inner corners to ensure that when we turn the bag inside out that these edges are very neat and can turn inside out without any problems. So simply take your scissors, make sure that you do not cut the stitching. Begin on this side and in the inner corner we want to cut as close as possible to the stitching there like that and the same on the other side and the inner corner as well as possible to the stitching but not cutting through the stitching once we've cut the inner and outer corners we will now after we've cut the outer and inner corners we want to pull apart the lining from the embroidered section of our tote bag and we would like to line up our pointy edges as closely as possible that side as well as this side the important 
part of, of stitching the next section is that we will only stitch the V-shape on the top and the V-shape at the bottom. So we will not stitch right through. We will only do this section first and this section. Let us pin them in place. So starting in the center, see how closely you can align those sections, those blocks. It's actually nice if we use a very bright colored thread or a contrast to your fabric, then you can see how it lines up on the same here, right on the edge. In the middle. And on this side, it does not need to be so precise. It will be on the inside of your bag and we do have a seam allowance of about one inch. When I cut my blocks, they will all cut the same size one inch from uh, the, the outer section of the embroidery. So use that as a guideline and also make sure that this will be where you will stitch. So we will I will complete stitching these two sections together as well as these two. So I've pinned the V-shape um, on this end as well as the V-shape on this end and to make it a little bit easier the embroidered section is easy to follow this line to, in, to stitch on but to make it a little bit easier for you perhaps you can use a ruler and a marker and just mark the line. Use the line on your embroidered section and follow that right through. That will ensure that this corner will also be very neat. And the same on this side, using that line of your embroidery as a guide and mark, make markings on the fabric. So that will be easier to stitch the two sections together. I've sewn these two sections um, together. Um, just another point that I thought of mentioning is that I find it much more accurate to start in the center and stitch outward and again starting in the center stitching outward. It might not align as well if you start in the one end at the one end and stitching right through. The same on this section, start in the very in, inner corner, stitch outward, start again on the inner corner, stitch outward. And it's actually very easy if you use your the edges of your blocks as a guide. For the next step, we will close these seams. This is just a simple straight seam. So we will do one, two, three, and four. I will pin them together and then we will look at it again. Only another four seams and our tote bag is finished or complete. Let us now do the last three seams. One of the seams in the lining you will leave open till the very last because it is one of these openings that we will turn the whole bag inside out. So both sides of the uh, embroidered section will be stitched now as well as only one of the sections on the lining. We will now pull the tote bag, open it up like this. And we are going to stitch this seam. So again just to show you let me show you on the lining section we will open it up and make sure that the opposite straight stitches align like this 
and we will pin and stitch in that direction. I have pinned three of the four last seams. The last seam we will leave open to turn the bag inside out on the lining side. I pinned both sides on the embroidered section and on this side and then also on one side of the lining. So as you can see the previous two straight stitches run through that way and the last stitch will go in the opposite direction. Just another note when you stitch these seams again it might be more accurate to start in the center stitch outward and again start in the center stitch outward and the same on this side to start in the center stitch outward and start in the center and stitch outward you will find that your corners will line up much more accurately we only have one last seam to stitch but we will only do this seam after we've turned the bag inside out before you turn the bag inside out make sure that there are any if there are any corners that are need to be cut that you cut these corners inner and outer corners to make sure that your corners are neat once the bag are turned inside out so let us go ahead and see what we've got Perhaps you want to scrunch it like this, otherwise we stretch the opening in the lining very badly. But yeah, we will close it with a, a seam. Pull the, the embroidered section and the, the lining out. And before you close the very last seam, we want to make sure that all our corners are neat because this will allow us to go back into the bag and push out those corners or cut the corners to make sure that they are neat and not stiff. That looks good. This corner we can just pull out with a needle. This corner looks good. We can pull that out with a needle as well. Oh, we might need a little bit more cutting on that corner. So we'll go back to that corner. And this one looks fine and then on the corners we will, can check it again just now but the other corners of the bag should be fine let me just go back and cut this one corner to make sure that it looks nice and tidy I've closed the the last seam I had to change my thread the whole bag I could stitch with black thread but this last um, stitching was done with white thread and also to match um, the handles so we can push the lining to the inside I hope you can see how lovely it looks on the inside no stitching that shows except that very last seam so now if you if you would like to add a closure I'm going to use this embellishment and I'm going to attach it here with a few hand stitches with needle and thread and then I will attach an elastic to the opposite side of the bag so that I have a closure let me do that and then we see what the bag looks like when it's completely done Okay, so I pushed out all the corners. It really looks quite fine. You can see there the corners align very well. And that is simply by starting in the edges as we, or in the corners as uh, we did step by step. 
for the upper section I pushed out these corners I went back and cut the one inner corner still a little bit but the sides also look good um, of course if you decided in the beginning that you like your handles to come out from the top then you can stitch right across this section and your handles will more be something like that um, of course then you will not have these pointy um, parts on your tote bag and I kind of love this this look on the tote bag it's something completely different um, and it's to me it's uh, part of the beauty of the bag so this is what our tote bag looks like um, it is a really fun project it's not that difficult once you know which seam must be stitched um, way. The final project measures about 10 and a half, 27 centimeters across, seven, well, seven and a half, 19 centimeters in height, and the width is five and a half inches by five and a half inches or 12 and a half centimeters. If you'll be using the five by five square blocks, you will have an even larger tote bag um, and I uh, really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would like to hear what you think and uh, I would love to read your comments. Thank you for watching.